In this presentation, we will look at profit center planning in new GL. In the classic GL, when you do profit center planning, it will update the GL PCT table, which is part of the classic GL. However, with new GL, the profit center planning will update the FAGL flex T totals table. It's much easier with this FAGL flex T because with this one single table, you can get the plan values for both your cost centers and your profit centers in the same table. Now a recommendation is when you're planning for expense accounts, do not plan it against your profit centers. You should be planning your expense accounts against your cost objects and most of the time we plan it against our cost centers. For example, salary expenses, other different type of ad expenses like administration expenses, HR costs, IT costs, finance costs, all these different type of expenses should be planned against your cost centers. Now in the cost center master data, you maintain your profit centers. So automatically when you enter the cost center in the system, the profit center will get derived. Hence this value of for example this $1000 will flow to the cost center and to the profit center as well. Now we should not put $1000 directly to the profit center, then you'll get missed out in the cost center. So you should directly only put against the cost center and from the cost center it should only go, it should go to the profit center. And you should also make sure that you do not double count by putting this expense accounts one time against the cost center and you should not again do another posting against the profit center. Then the profit center will have $2,000 instead of $1,000. So that's why it's very important that you don't use expense accounts for profit center planning. You put the expense accounts against the cost centers or any other cost objects and from that the profit center will get derived in the system and then the amount will automatically flow through. Now there are some configuration settings you need to do in the system for planning. Let's look at this in more detail. So let's come to your SAP IMG menu path, financial accounting new, general ledger accounting new, then you have the planning function and we'll first install the summary table. So let's execute the transaction over here and key in our totals table that is FAGLF. EXT, FAGL Flex T, and then execute the table. Now, if it's already installed, it's all right, so you don't have to go and install. Most of the time, in some servers, you'll already find it, it's already been installed. But nevertheless, I'll just show you how to install this if you're doing it for the first time. Then execute the transaction, and you'll get a message saying that all this has been activated. That's all. Then just go back, all being all green, so no problem and you can go back to your main screen. Now if you can run your FAGL Flex T table in your SC16N transaction code, that's your table information, and you get data values coming in, that means it's already been installed. Nevertheless, you can still go and install this as well. The next setting is to import the planning layouts. Here you can import a planning layout from one source client to another client. Now we are in the same client if you're using a IDA server, but if you're using different servers, for example, if you're within some environment like a QA server and you're in client 210 to your remove it to 220, then you can put the source client and you can import the planning layout. I'll just show you we are this particular service in this only one client is there. Nevertheless, I just put the source client ID, it automatically comes up, just execute, and you'll get this planning layout and then you can select which one you want to import and you can execute in the background and this will do the planning layout importation. I would recommend that you take assistance from a basis administrator if you are trying to move from one client to another client. But if you are just going to do for practice then you can just play around in the IDA system. So we can close the technical help section. Again, because this mentions a technical help, it's always better to have the basis administrator to help you out perform these transactions. Most of the time, this would have already been done when you're getting ready to do the, the configurations in the system. Then let's go to define plan periods. Now here you define which are the periods valid for planning data. Let's execute the transaction. And you can see a variant is also given. This is the posting period variance. And you can see from period 1 to year 992, 
tut.